In the last video, we learned how to find the standard deviation, both types, both the population and the sample standard deviation. And then we learned all sorts of things about them. They're a measure of spread. They're not resistant. The sigma is called unadjusted. They're always positive. And you're going to find them with your calculator when you run one variable stats. The thing about standard deviation is that it has this large square root in the formula, if you see it, that big square root. And that makes it actually kind of difficult to work with for high level stuff in general. So um, it's tricky to work with when we get to later chapters. So we want to learn a definition now that will help us out later when we don't want to deal with the square root. And that is the variance. Now variance is another measure of how spread out an entire data set is. So the larger your variance is, the more spread out your data is. Simple as that, just like standard deviation. And when you look at the formula for the population variance, you can see it's exactly the same as that of standard deviation, except it doesn't have that huge square root in it, which is a good thing because we don't want the big square root. It actually makes things more difficult later on with later material. So what relationship is there between variance and standard deviation? Well, the variance is the standard deviation squared. So the population variance is the population standard deviation sigma squared. And then the sample variance is the sample standard deviation squared. And that's all we really need to know about it at this point. Well, that and everything I list down here. So let me type up that relationship one second. There we have it. So the, the nuts and bolts of it is that the variance is the standard deviation squared. That's the relationship right there. And that means that the larger your standard deviation is, the larger your variance is, and then the more spread your data set will have. Keep in mind also that this also means um, another thing. Let me put that in real quick. That the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, right? So if I take this, that's the standard deviation. It's the square root of your variance. So you can go both directions with that. So you might have to go um, take your standard deviation square root and find your variance, or you might have to take your variance, take the square root of it and find your standard deviation. So both of those are pretty useful little tips to have. I'm gonna shade them in different colors just so you can keep them straight from each other. There we have it. Now, just like the mean um, and the standard deviation for that matter, there's two versions. You can have your variance, which is the sigma squared. And you can have your variance, which is the sample variance, which is S squared. Right? So one's for a variance for a population, one's a variance for a sample, but they basically mean the same thing they mean a measure of spread, but they mean it in different ways, if that makes sense. So the population one is if it's for your data set was an entire population, and the sample one is if your data set was just a sample. Now, grant you, the sample one's going to happen more often because we more often in, in this course have access to just a sample of data, not the entire population's worth. Okay, but if you did by some chance have the whole population, then you'd use sigma squared as your variance. Variance is always positive, just like standard deviation is, because there's the squaring involved of the deviations in here in the formula. That'll turn everything positive no matter what right there. So that would mean that, of course, the variance is positive. It's not resistant to outliers, just like standard deviation isn't. I mean, all variance is, is the standard deviation squared. So if the standard deviation isn't resistant, neither is the variance. Um, sigma squared, the population variance, is called unadjusted in computer outputs. So when you see those, the word unadjusted, that means that it's the population standard deviation, or population variance, excuse me, rather than the sample variance. All right, and then what else? We will never calculate variance by hand. Now, the calculator doesn't calculate variance directly, but it does find it indirectly, namely it finds the standard deviation, then we can use the relationship that the variance is the standard deviation squared to find the variance. Now keep in mind that the variance, either variance we're talking about, its units are the original data set unit squared, which of course doesn't actually make a lot of sense, but that's what it is. And that's why we don't use it for interpretation in chapter three, for example, but we will start using it in chapters nine and 10, where we don't care about the, the units so much, we care about some other stuff. 
All right, so let's consider this stats exam yet again. I think this is the last time. So we're going to find the population variance and the sample variance. So let me pull up the calculator. Oh, and I've lost our data set, so let me run it again. So stat, calculate, one variable. My menu system's being a little weird. One variable stat, I'm going to go down to calculate, enter. And there it is. So it finds SX is 13.968 and Sigma X is 13.251. Now I could just type that, and I will, one second. Now the issue with just typing it into a calculator, let me type it 13.251, then I hit the squared button, the X squared button right there, enter. And I can see I get 175.589, which is fine. Now the thing is that when I did this, I lost some accuracy. There were more decimal places to sigma that I didn't keep. The way that I could get around that is I could use the VARS button, V-A-R-S. It's right below your arrow keys. It stands for variables. And of course, the name of the course is statistics. So if you hit number five, it'll pop to the statistics menu. And you can see there, number four, for example, has sigma x sitting there. That the calculator stores the last time you ran one variable stats. So it knows sigma x is 13.251, blah, 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 blah. And it actually has kept the blah, blah, blah. It keeps the decimal places. So if I type sigma x, and then I hit the squared button, and then I hit enter, I get 175.6. Now grant you, the decimal places difference here might not matter that much to you, but maybe it will. So maybe it's better to keep that much accuracy. So it doesn't matter much to me, but I'm going to type this in. So 175.6, at least I think that's what it was. Yep, 175.6, roughly. And I'm going to go write up those instructions one second. There we go. So I wrote up the optional calculator instructions. Again, you don't have to do them that way. You can just type 13.968 squared, but it's not nearly as much fun. So let me go to variables, pick number five. This time I want number three because I want SX. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to hit squared, enter. And there we have it, 195.1 repeating. So let me type that. I'm even going to give it a little repeating bar because that's what it deserves. There we have it. All right, now which one was more appropriate in this situation? Uh, definitely the sample one. Um, the sample variance because... This, these data were from a sample. Sample variance S squared because the data were from a sample. All right, now once you know you're using a sample data value like that, then it automatically must be a statistic because statistics come from samples. Parameters are from populations. So this is definitely a statistic because this is from a sample. All right, we're all done with variance. And I'll see you back here in the next video for um, some analysis of standard deviations with normal curve pictures. So I'll see you then.